Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to SQL Server Performance Monitoring and Tuning video brought to you by SQLworkshops.com. In this video, we will compare the performance of memory optimized table variable with disk based table variable. Let's take a look. To practice this example, you need the SQL test tool. If you don't have the SQL test tool, you can go to the website sqltest.org. There you can click on download. Here you will find a link to install SQL test. Once you have SQL test tool installed, you can click on file, open online examples. There you will find the example SQL test memory optimized table variable versus disk based table variable. Let's click OK to open this example. In this example, I'm creating a database called SQL workshops IMOLTP. This database has one data file, one log file, and it has a file group to store memory optimized data. While creating this database, I use placeholders. Database data file location one, database log file location, database data file location two, because when I create this database, I don't know the directory structure you have in your computer. So I use this placeholder. And to execute the script, you need to create a file called find and replace in the SQL test directory under documents. In this file, you have to define what these placeholders are. For example, database data file location one points to this directory where I have free space. You can find an example of this file here to get this queries, you can go to settings, comments, you can copy and paste this into your management studio. If you go here, you will find a sample content of this file. And you have to create this file in the SQL test directory under documents and the file name is find and replace dot txt. Let's go to workload four. So we create a database which includes memory optimized data file group. And next we create a table called tab 72. This table has three columns, C1 integer primary key cluster, C2 integer and C3 character 2000. I'm inserting 2000 rows into this table. Column C1 and C2 will have values between one and 2000. Column C3 as replicate A2000. And then we are creating a table type called temp tab 72. This table type is memory optimized. The table type also has C1 integer, C2 integer, and C3 character 2000. Then we create store procedures. First, we will look at these two store procedures, PROC1 and PROC2. The store procedure PROC1 declares a table variable, and this is a disk-based table variable, C1 integer, C2 integer, and C3 character 2000. And we are selecting C1, C2, C3 from our table tab 72, and we are inserting into the table variable where C1 less than or equal to 16. PROC2 is very similar, except we used the table variable, which is based on memory optimized table type. So we declare a table variable using a table type, which is memory optimized. And again, we are inserting 16 rows into this memory optimized table variable, column C1, C2, and C3. We are creating two more store procedures, PROC3 and PROC4. We will look at them a bit later. To create this database, the table, the table type, and the store procedures, you can click on workload 4 and start current. We have them created. Now let's go to the queries we copied from the settings and comments. Let's look at how many files we have for TEMDB. We have 25 files, one log file, 24 data files, all of them 
same size. It's important to avoid TIMDB allocation contention that you have all data files with same size. And let's see what trace flags we have. We have trace flag 1118. This trace flag and additional TIMDB files are necessary for us to avoid TIMDB allocation contention. Now let's go to uh, workload 3. If you have not created additional files for TIMDB, you can use workload 3 to create those files. Here I use the placeholder TIMDB data file location. So you have to fill in this location in the find and replace.txt file. And here you have to customize the number of files according to the logical processors you have. I have 24 logical processors. So I fill in here 23 additional files. I already created them. If you want, you can customize this and create them. Let's go to workload one. In workload one, we are executing this PROC1. The PROC1 is using disk-based table variable. We are executing this in a loop for 100 times for 120 seconds. Let's do start current on workload one. It takes about 28 milliseconds. If you want this time in milliseconds, you can click on tools and you can choose average DB time in milliseconds. It takes around 28 milliseconds. Let's cancel and let's start again. It's very predictable. It takes around 28 milliseconds. Let's cancel this query. Let's now compare how PROC2 is doing. PROC2 is using memory optimized table variable. Let's start current. You see it's taking only 12 milliseconds. Let's cancel and start again. It takes 12 milliseconds. Again, very predictable. Memory optimized table variable in this case is more than twice faster compared to disk-based table variable. Let's cancel this query. Let's go to workload 2. Workload 2, we are executing PROC1 using 24 threads in parallel. So you will see this table variable being declared 24 times concurrently. Let's execute this workload. Let's see the average time. It's 77, 80 milliseconds. Let's go to SQL Server and let's see what kind of weights these requests experience. We are selecting from exec requests. We are looking for wait type, wait time, wait resource. Let's press F5. You see, once in a while, they are waiting for log buffers because disk-based table variable will have disk footprint. In this case, they are writing to TimpDB transaction log. Once in a while, we see this log buffer weights and some of them does not wait. So this is a overhead when you are using disk-based table variable. So once in a while you see log buffers. Let's look at the average time. The average time is 121 milliseconds because a lot of time is spent waiting for log buffers. Now let's execute PROC2. PROC2 is based on memory optimized table variable. Let's do start current. Now you see it is using only 35 or 34 milliseconds. And when you go here and you press F5, it is not waiting for anything because our memory optimized table variable has no disk footprint. It does not wait for log buffers or page latches. Let's look at an, another example. Let's go to workload 4 and let's look at PROC3 and PROC4. PROC3 is inserting 1600 rows instead of 16 rows and PROC4 is also inserting 1600 rows. PROC3 uses disk-based table variable. 
PROC4 uses memory optimized table variable. We already created these store procedures, so we can go to workload 2 and we can start PROC3. Let's do start current on workload 2. You see, it is quite slow. It is taking around 5 seconds. When you go to Management Studio to monitor performance, you see page latch weights on page ID 1. This is the PFS page. Even though we have 24 data files, we have page latch weights. And you see it is all waiting on PFS page on the same data file. Could it be accidental? Let's press F5. Again, on the fifth file, they are waiting for this PFS data structure on the twelfth file. And the performance is quite bad. Now let's cancel this query. And you see here it is 3.6. Now, 3.6 seconds. Now let's execute PROC4. Let's press F5. Instead of 3.6, it executes in around 2.3 seconds. It is now 2.3 seconds. If you go and look at the weights, there you see it is not waiting for anything. As we saw before, the memory optimized table variable does not have log buffer issues or it does not wait for page latch weights. Let's make a summary. Memory optimized table variable is much faster than disk based table variable. There is no page latch weights. There is no log buffer weights. There is no disk footprint. This leads to better performance. If you are using disk based table variable today, it is very easy to change to start using memory optimized table variable. You have to declare a memory optimized data file group in your database and declare a table type which is memory optimized and start using that table type when you declare a table variable. Thanks for listening. If you have any suggestions or comments, send me an email. Bye.